Are you looking to make tons of money? Tired of being broke as hell? And wouldn't it be cool to get rich at the same time as taking the moral high ground? Well, there's always money in the church. Well, in Joel Osteen's case, there's literally money in the church. <laughs> like, stashed in the walls behind a toilet. A Houston plumber working at Lakewood Church finds cash inside a bathroom wall. Now to developments in a story that KPRC2 has been tracking for years now. Hundreds of thousands of dollars reported missing from Lakewood Church may have been found in a bathroom wall of the church. Apparently about seven years ago, half a million dollars or so went missing from Joel Osteen's church. And just recently, a plumber who was working on a toilet actually stumbled upon envelopes full of cash and checks that were stashed behind the tiling and the insulation. There was a loose toilet in the wall and uh, we removed the tile, well they removed the tile, uh, went to go remove the toilet and I moved some insulation away and uh, about 500 envelopes fell out of the wall and I was like, oh wow. And when he moved it, it just came raining down on him. If that doesn't feel like a blessing or a miracle, I don't know what does, dude. You're just, you're a plumber making an honest living, a good wage, but then you go to work on a church and money pours down upon you. <laughs> it's insane. Most of the time when you're working in plumbing, the thing that pours down upon you is not so awesome. It's a lot of filth and gunk. I guess you could say that money is one of the filthiest things, but let's be honest, I'd rather it rain cash upon me than fecal matter. That seems pretty obvious. A few years ago, when we first reported this story, Crime Stoppers was offering a $25,000 reward. It does raise some questions, though. You know, who took this money? And who put it behind the wall? And also, who forgot to take it back out? Is this an inside job? Who knows? But it's really not surprising that there's these money scandals involving mega churches. It's actually tax exempt, so all the money that comes in is basically pure profit. It seems as though a lot of this money just ends up lining the pockets of these celebrity preachers. And they have these luxurious mansions, this very expensive clothing, jewelry, and sometimes private jets in the case of Kenneth Copeland. And we give God praise for it and thanksgiving. It is debt free. This is a debt free airplane for Kenneth Copeland Ministries to do the work of the gospel all over the world. Father, in Jesus name, thank you for the fulfillment of this vision. And we praise you and honor you that you are supplying it. You are our source. In Jesus' name, amen. And the way he justifies his use for a private jet is by saying that if he flies commercial with other humans, it's like getting in a long tube full of demons. <laughs> right. the, this dope-filled world, right. and get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons, right. and it's, it's deadly. A long tube of demons. I gotta say, he couldn't look more like a demon in disguise. It's like he's wearing the flesh suit of the last man that he killed and it just doesn't quite fit properly on the demonic bone structure that's underneath. He's got these dead shark eyes that convey little to no emotion other than pure evil. A long tube with a bunch of demons. Inside Edition actually followed up on Kenneth Copeland's statement and they actually confronted him on what that means. And it's, dude, I'm not even joking, maybe one of the funniest, best interviews you'll ever see. Isn't it true that you want to fly commercial so that you can fly in luxury? How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen. These intermittent smiles that he does only come off as creepy. <laughs> you don't want to catch you off guard. I love Inside Edition. You got to get this now. Hey, you listen to me? My, my wife thinks Inside Edition is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen this interview a number of times, and that still makes me wildly uncomfortable, my guy. We love it. My wife thinks it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I think he just got hit with the Holy Ghost for a second. And I prayed about it, and I thought, I'm not missing that dedication in Jerusalem. Without the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry, he made it he made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. Oh, give me the friggin' willies, dude. Why does he have to always sound like he's about to suck your soul right out of your chest? He's a fucking skinwalker, dude, and I'm convinced of that. Again, getting back to the comment, 
you said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Holy shit, man. Beals above himself just fucking surfaced through his eyes. Don't you ever say I did. I really get the vibe that he wants to reach out and slap her, but he knows that he can't. So he just points his scary little demon finger in their faces. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And then his brain breaks and he just recites biblical verses because he doesn't actually have anything to say that comes from within. So he just, he's just brain breaks and then he just starts reciting like uh, Ecclesiastes and Ezekiel, fucking John 3.16. We wrestle not with people but with principalities and powers, unseen things, rulers of the darkness of this world. Talking about the devil, he's a very real devil. I know, because I am the devil. He's very real, believe me, for he is within me. You have some fancy clothes. I mean, I for a pastor, you are living yes. a life of luxury. Yes, you've am. got great homes. You've got yes, great planes. You, you drive in limos. I'm a and very wealthy man. You're a very wealthy man. Yes. Is he not understanding the vibe that she's throwing out? He's like, yeah, I do. I do have nice ass shit. I'm fly as hell. He's just going around stunting on people. If you go into the old covenant, do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? Are you saying that Jewish people they appreciate money more than... No, really? They believe in wealth. Some Can people it? would find that offensive. No. Oof. Good God, Kenneth. Get in the fucking car and drive away. What are you doing? I'm not even a fan of him. This is like hurtful to watch. You think I'm rich. What about the Jews? Didn't even think about that, did you? Check and mate. Anyways, it's not just Kenneth Copeland, it's not just Joel Osteen, it's not just North American preachers. As evidenced by this documentary called Profit for a Profit, where documentarian Reggie Yates concludes his travels around South Africa communities by spending a week with Prophet Mumboro, a charismatic yet controversial church leader who is adored by his thousands of followers and renowned for as much as his dancing as he is for his miracles that he performs. It's not just prayer people are buying into. The church shop sells everything from holy salt and holy water to fashion garments. You've got borrowed t-shirts, got refreshments with his face on it as well. It's um, more like a concert and there's like a merch stand. This is no longer about God. This is no longer about the holiness that is supposedly supposed to be centered around. It's become you know, the pastors themselves are these celebrities and they've become the symbols that have replaced God. Wow. What the hell is that? It's like a fucking pig squeal. It's like he was doing that song in the rendition of a heavy metal band in which it has guttural screams. <laughs> There's also this weird thing that he does where he actually invites all the people who come to his mass to bring their underwear. It's very weird and they're all just sort of waving their underwear in the air above their heads. And he's like blessing them and all their genitals and stuff. There's a lot of like genital based things going on, I find. The prophet doesn't shy away from healing this follower's private parts. His word for the vagina is biscuit. Oh my god, he's stepping on. I spent over 100 grand just in one day. And I come back again and it just. Sometimes you can come two, three times in one week. Fill up That's a lot car. of money on suits, though, so, isn't it? That's a, so a lot so of money on suits. It's just insane to watch a man spend thousands and thousands of dollars on suits instead of literally turning around and maybe giving some of that money to the chick who has an STI 
he just steps on her private parts. And then he goes, okay, anyways, I gotta go spend a bunch of money on a fly-ass looking suit. I've come to meet 21-year-old Fifi and Kiki. Good to meet you finally. Um... After Mboro's call out, they're shopping for underwear to be blessed at Sunday service. <laughs> and then it's the wrong thing. So a thong's out of the question then, yeah? No, I don't no, like I, thongs. I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah, okay. me too. You see what I'm saying? Isn't that wildly uncomfortable? They're literally shopping for underwear with this man in mind so that he can bless their underwear. Didn't that make anybody else uh, red flags go off, just alarm bells ringing? <laughs> and Boris just seen mine. <laughs> what is this? You like what I'm doing or not? We do. Must we stop? No. Because somebody doesn't like it? No. Just touch it, let me pray. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Touch in the name of Jesus. Anyways, I'm actually sick right now. That's why I'm doing this video instead of being at work. I had to take the day off. So instead of going to the doctor, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to actually do is dip my balls in holy water, do a couple of Hail Marys, and send all of my money to Joel Osteen. Because he looks like he needs it. Peace out, guys. Jesus.